Did new snow come from all, all this this yeah. happened today? <laughs> The Sanford Pledge of Allegiance being led by Peter Martin. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, the Welcome to the what is the second uh, regular meeting of the Board of Trustees for the month of March 2024. Let's go straight to the minutes. I uh, can I get a motion that the minutes of the March 11th, 2024 meeting be approved. Trustee Fundenza. I'll second. Trustee Baskin, discussion. All um, it, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I would like to amend minutes. Um, I would, uh, there's a couple locations where uh, description um, of my statements where we describe the tone of voice. It says the phrase is raising the voice. Um, we've never um, actually put the tone. We just put the actual spoken words. And I think that it should remain that way. I know in the past 20 months, there's been plenty of times where every board member has been But um, uh, has raised your voice, um, and it has not been reflected in the minutes, so, and it more should it be. So, um, actually, it is reflected in the minutes if you go back, even when audience members, um, and I will say expressing frustration, so and so stated. So, it is true that I have done that before. Yeah, well, expressing frustration, I think the same, same well, raise your voice. but you did raise your voice. I did. I did raise my voice, but so is every member. And unless you stated that every time somebody's raised their voice, then it shouldn't, it either should be there. It's getting more frequent. Not at all. It's getting more frequent and you're getting louder and it's more aggressive. Actually, okay, so all right, let actually, me, let, let me have a comment also on that. Okay. <laughs> so you're saying in the last 18 months, there wasn't frequent raised voices? It's actually more. You're getting more aggressive. You're raising oh, your you're voice higher. Me, me specific. You end then. So you're, uh, oh, you're just targeting. I'm, I'm not targeting you. Anybody can see it. I'm, I'm feeling targeted. Okay. And uh, um, I, at this point, I would suggest that you've raised an amendment. The person that had uh, made the motion was Trustee Fundanza. So, Bernadette, do you accept the amendment? I do not because I do. I want to use that. Sorry. I do not. I think this this goes for Frank and myself. We should all be more cognizant of how we are using our voices and tone. Um, maybe this will be a measure to help us be aware that we are, you know, flying off the handle sometimes. Or, or um, you know, we we all are guilty for sure, except for Mary. We can all say Mary <laughs> has not been guilty of raising her voice, but um, you know, this does apply. And you know, this is not the first time where you know we've had these moments. And I, I will say, you were you in particular are very. I, I maybe it's not. I don't know it sometimes when I when I get frustrated. But it got it went from zero to pretty loud, pretty quick. So um, I do not accept the motion change just as a as a measure. Perhaps in the future, we all are more aware of how we talk and have it in record. Well, we have a record of everyone on this board raising their voice. But we don't make it on that. Oh. But what we don't have is um, a statement within the minutes describing the tone of voice. So unless we're gonna go back and amend all those minutes to reflect the tone, we shouldn't start now. Yeah, I, I feel that uh, Democrats, particularly me and Sean are being targeted by a new initiative um, and uh, I object to it. So for example, last meeting for the first time ever, uh, in an unprecedented manner, uh, the village clerk inserted herself into a board conversation uh, saying, uh, lower your voice. No, I asked you to please stop raising your voice. Yes, and yeah. you have never done that. And Bernadette just admitted that she has raised her voice. Frank, as we all know, has raised her voice. 
your friends in the audience have raised their voice. You have never inserted yourself into a conversation for any of those people. Furthermore, it is not, in my opinion, the position of the village clerk to insert themselves into a board discussion. I, I have been to a lot of board meetings throughout this area. I have never seen a village board uh, or a village clerk insert herself the way or themselves the way you did at the last board meeting to interrupt a board conversation. Um, I appreciate that we all uh, want to um, engage in civil discourse. However, this is a contested political space. And for example, I raised my voice because I was cut off and I was denied the ability uh, to continue a point I was making. When someone is shut down, um, a natural response that almost everyone in this room will have is potentially to sound annoyed and potentially to raise their voice. Bernadette has admitted to raising her voice when she feels passionately about something. She's interrupted Liz, raised her voice at Liz. Frank, as we all know, raises his voice at regular intervals uh, since he got here and before. And um, no comment has ever been made in the minutes or by the clerk at a meeting. And uh, I, I would hate to see the clerk's position weaponized, so to speak, to try to dampen down the voices of the Democrats um, on this board. And I, I think that is inappropriate in the degradation of the position. So I have an additional amendment to um, well, so, I, I, am I not allowed to speak? To okay. The, I appreciate it. Uh, I think the notion that two wrongs make a right suddenly is bogus. Uh, I think that the clerk explained herself to state that it's escalating and as such, it's going to become more frequent if it continues. And this notion that it's based on Democrats or whoever, I don't really care who it is. I've told you in the last meeting, it's going to stop and it's not going to continue or we're going to be adjourning meetings if it continues in any way, shape or form, period. It is not appropriate, it is aggressive, and it is something that our employees, our staff members here do not deserve to have around them in that manner. I don't know where that diatribe just came from, but that was inappropriate just as much belittling the staff member in front of a crowd at this point in time. That's enough's enough in that respect. So I wouldn't agree with it either. It sounds like Bernie does not agree with the change or other amendment. Uh, my other amendment is uh, in section 15, other business. Uh, the statement says, Trustee Raymond said he's not aggressive, he's passionate. That's just a fragment of my actual statement. And my statement was much longer and I talked about transparency. Um, I haven't had a chance to look at the recording, but I would just ask that the, the clerk would go back and actually put my statement in that was recorded and not just a fragment. Same question to Bernadette as the maker of the motion. No, go watch you yourself at the last meeting. So you just admitted you didn't watch it. So you have no idea how you spoke to people. So no. I, I know that I had an additional statement regarding transparency that was left out. She's only legally required to summarize. So but the, she left out the subject matter. It does an in, injustice to board members when the full content, not, not everything they said, but the intent and the significant piece of what they said is, is deliberately omitted or, or inadvertently omitted. I feel like, uh, again, the Democrats, I feel, have been given short trip in these minutes. Um, just a question of when we raise it. Last meeting, I had the exact same concern. Um, there was a statement where it said Ben was frustrated, period as if you can read my mind. Well, what did I say? And why was I frustrated? That needed to be in the minutes. Um, and luckily, I, I, I'm thankful I had a little recourse there. Um, but in general, uh, we could have uh, three sentences of what a board, uh, public says out there and, and four, four words in response um, on, in these minutes. And it's been in balance for quite some time. I think we're worried about all those sort of situations, maybe more be more succinct and to the point. I think what happens is you guys go on for speeches and honestly, her only requirement is to summarize. So if you're concerned about your specific point being put across, get to the point, say it. 
that it could be in the record. Well, then I request to table these minutes until I have an opportunity to review the recording so that I can give verbatim what I said in the meeting so that she well, can put us in the request is in a motion. Are you making a motion? I'm, I'm making a motion to table. I'll say until such a time I can review. Motion to table, second. All in favor, roll call, please. Trustee Baskin? Yes. Trustee Vandenza? No. Trustee Price Bush? No. Trustee Raymond? Yes. Mayor Rossi? No. Can I get a uh, roll call vote now on the original question of the minutes? The, the last comment I'd like to make um, is that I do not feel this has been escalated. That is a false narrative. I feel like actually it's been somewhat better, but whenever the rules of procedure are not followed, that is asking for conflict and escalation. And so what I ask you, Frank, is to follow the rules of procedure so that things don't have, people don't feel shut down, people don't feel unheard, and there isn't that escalation because it's a natural response to that action. And in the meeting where you uh, had the most attention, let's say, I wasn't the presiding officer. So I'm not sure what you're talking about. Can we get the roll call vote, please? Trustee Baskin. What is the motion again? On uh, the minutes. That's no. uh, as written. No. That's a no. Okay. Trustee Von Dainza? Yes. Trustee Price Bush? Yes. Trustee Raymond? No. Mayor Rossi? Yes. Three to two. The minutes have been approved. No presentations tonight. Uh, we were hoping to get uh, one from uh, USG Water, but uh, we we're still working with them to get our contract amendments together with Don Rhodes. Should have more on that for the next meeting, indeed. Uh, public comment and agenda items only, three minutes per speaker. Uh, as I always say, this is a good time for those on Zoom. If you do want to give a public comment, to raise your hand on Zoom uh, while we take care of uh, folks in the room. I should also include that if you did send an email message uh, regarding uh, sidewalks, especially, uh, those uh, messages have been sent to the trustees. Uh, I sent two earlier today, two in the last little bit, so you have them in your emails in case you need them. Uh, so we have four uh, that I, I remember uh, so far, and uh, three minutes will be the timing and this. <clears throat> Okay, I have comments on two items of West Cornwall's 89 Hyde on the, uh, the budget. Uh, there, I believe, was a motion made, although it's in tiny print at the bottom of the agenda, to uh, schedule budget workshops. Um, budget workshops have been done the last five or more years. And actually, Frank, you attended those. So they must have been valuable for you when you weren't a village official. So I think uh, I very much <laughs> encourage you to please hold the workshops. They are very valuable. Um, they are uh, started to look at the budget. There are a number of questions. Um, I can pass them on. Uh, but I, I think we need to hear from, from the departments um, on that. On the issue of the stop signs, uh, stop signs are not a recommended measure um, by professionals. Um, before we do any um, actions on Hyde and Malta, I believe we need to have baseline data. If you remember back while I was still a trustee, um, I told you about the CD, uh, CRTC offering free mm -hmm. traffic counts and turning so we can get the data without paying for it, see what the issue is, see how many people are speeding, et cetera, um, going through stop signs, et cetera, and um, then do an action and then see again after six months, have them come back, remeasure again. Otherwise, it's just anecdotal. Um, as to, um, you know, and, and frankly, uh, you dismiss anecdotal information from residents of Hyde. So um, I think we need real data. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Gary. Yep. Watch your step around that community. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to give this to Jennifer. That's not Jennifer. Oh, That's her turn. Sorry. <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, budget. Okay. Sorry. 
Is it a statement? It's not a good statement. Uh, it looks like a budget request. Yeah. It's a budget request. Um, so Gary Stevenson, 45 West High. Um, I'm representing the Historic District Commission, of which I'm the co-chairman. And I'd like to submit a, a budget request for uh, signage for the Historic District to delineate the Historic District. Uh, there are five signs that would be required to do that. Um, there are two signs that exist on high. At this point in time, they're very old, damaged, and not consistent with other signage of the village. So we would like to, to add five signs that will designate the area. Um, the cost would be about $100 a sign uh, and something consistent with the signage of the village, particularly like the parking signs that we have now that have the little arch and the, um, the spring on them, uh, we think would be appropriate. We would also need to have them installed. Uh, I spoke with the, the uh, uh, DPW. Um, those would uh, uh, cost about $100 with materials and labor to install the signs. That can be a separate budget item. It could be incorporated within the DPW budget. But so again, that would be about $500. So again, what we're requesting is, a, is hopefully a budget uh, line item for this work uh, to help avoid some of the confusion that we had last year uh, budget where the only record of what was being requested was in the budget workshops and we had to go back to videos and a lot of confusion about what was what. So uh, in that respect, I'm requesting a budget item so that we can handle it properly efficiently. Thank you. Want to hand it to Jennifer? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I came in late and I was... Uh... Okay. Probably Anybody else in the house? Yes, right. I can follow up. You guys can kick over that green wire, but it'll make it easier for him. Yeah. Ray Otten, 16 Middlebrook Avenue. Uh, two items on the agenda I'd like to speak on. I noticed that there's a uh, request for $1,000 uh, pertaining to uh, park or uh, you know, I don't have it in front of me. It's right in the front page. Um, move to approve funding for $1,000 for Village Memorial Day Parade. A um, big part of the parade is the parade group. And each year it starts up at the north end of the village, comes down through, stops at the bridge, and et cetera. Uh, one of the key areas that it starts at is the V. Uh, or the triangle up the north end of the village. And each year, the Rotary Club puts in money to try and beautify that because it's an ugly, ugly little park. Um, I'm getting together with a few, uh, not only Rotary, but a few others, uh, to see if we can get some funding to put perennials in that garden so that it doesn't have to be good money going after that every year into there. Rotary works hard to earn their money and to put, you know, four or five hundred dollars every year into flowers that die off and never come back. It's to be ridiculous. So I'm looking not for a budget item, but looking for maybe some money out of the parks budget so that we can get some perennials to put in there. I've already talked with folks about procuring the product. I have somebody that's willing to design it. Um, we just need to get some money to put it in there. Rotary is going to make a donation again this year, but we'd like to do it in perennials so that it doesn't have to be replaced every year or dies off in a month. So by the middle of summer, you're going down through there and it's ugly again. What motion are you referring to? Which one? Well, budget. $1,000 for the Memorial Day parade. Right. So I'm tying it to that because that's the chief. Uh, that's the chief thing we do with that triangle. We put in red, white, and blue carnation, or not carnations, what do they call it? Miracles? No, no, geraniums. Geraniums. 
um, to try and get an Americana spirit and that into there. So that's what I would like to see if we can do uh, to help us out with that. The second thing is that Liz touched on is the additional study that we want to do uh, pertaining to Hyde Boulevard. There was a study done, if I'm not mistaken, uh, a few years ago as part of another uh, uh, item that did study the traffic and did study the speed of traffic and that on Hyde Boulevard. 20 seconds, right? Now we want to do another study, spend more money until we get the numbers that we feel we want to hear instead of what is actually what was actually on that study that was done. It showed average speeds of, I think, 31, 32 miles an hour. So again, how many studies are we going to do on the same thing? Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Excuse me, that study doesn't cost anything. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, the kids next up on uh, Zoom go this. Uh, Keith Lewis, 38 East High Street, Boston Spa. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello. Yes, yes. we can. <clears throat> Uh, I'm disappointed the board has not managed to put together the budget workshops that have taken place the last five years, but I'm not surprised given the current makeup of the board. In November, the mayor accused another trustee of lying when he referred to the mayor as a land developer. But as I showed, the mayor had actually identified himself as a land developer on multiple social media accounts. And... <clears throat> In the press release, when he announced his candidacy for mayor, he was also listed by the Republican Party as a land developer. Um, Bernadette did not state any kind of uh, objection to that. She allowed the mayor to chastise and to uh, accuse and to belittle another public servant, another trustee on the board. He has never acknowledged the fact that he was the one lying either to the University of Miami law students where his bio lists himself as a land developer or to the billions of people on Instagram who rely on the truthful bios as required by the uh, rules of the platform or to the Republican Party or to the people in the village of Boston Spa who read that press release. So I am not surprised the budget workshops have been silenced because of Frank's doing. I'm disappointed that Mary and Bernadette would go along with it because when democracy uh, does not see the light of the day, it, it dies. And that's what happens when you do these things behind closed doors. And when we can't rely on the mayor to tell the truth, we can't rely on the things in the budget to be done correctly when they're done outside the view of the public. In for a penny, in for a pound, I always say. If you lie about small things, you're willing to lie about big things. And the fact that your fellow trustees are not holding you accountable is actually a travesty. Thank you. Thank you. Travis Steves, you didn't watch the last meeting, clearly. Uh, anybody else? Yes, Mike. Thank you. Mike Iacucci, 9 Russell Street. Um, just a couple of points about budget process. Um, I was pleased to see Mr. Mayor, that you released kind of a, a statement of the priorities and so forth, which I think is very important for the community to be aware of. So I, I applaud that step. Um, many of us have not, may I continue? Right. Many of us have not really spent a lot of time on budgeting. And if I may, I just want to make a couple of points about the budgeting process. And to me, it's important to recognize that the budget is not simply a piece of paper or a series of pages of paper that lays out numbers. Um, it's meant to be a process and a process involving 
various stakeholders. Uh, the National Advisory Council on State and Local Budgeting uh, points out that it is in the best interests of government to have involved stakeholders. And going on to quote this group, the term stakeholder refers to anyone affected by or has a stake in government. So again, I think every resident of the community fits into that category. Uh, in addition, the, let me get this name correct, the Government Finance Officers, Officers Association lays out principles of budget. And among those principles, they emphasize the goal of meaningfully engaging citizens and elected officials. And again, to quote this organization, budgets are more credible and receive the broadest support when citizens and elected officials have provided input throughout the planning process, are aware of major developments and understand budget trade-offs. And to me personally, not quoting any organization now, to me personally, having budget workshops is something that would be helpful to members of the public who have an interest in looking at and weighing in with their opinions on what the budget proposes. Thank you. Thank you. Who else in the room? Yes. Hello. Terry Schoen, 39 Hyde Boulevard. I'm here specifically to talk about motion C about putting up stop signs on our street. Liz, I'm sorry that you disagree with me. Um, I love living in the village. I love our schools, I love the community, I love our parades, I love everything about it. I love the fact that there's a soccer field right down the block from my house and my kids can get on their bikes and walk down the block. I love Malta Ave School. I love that my third grader can walk down the street. But when you come out of my house, I live in the Shallons old house and you make a left and you head towards Chapman Street. I will literally stand there with my daughter who's this high as people drive by like this buried into their home. Yeah. Please, please put up the stop signs. We would really appreciate it. I don't know what else to do. I don't see any cost in here at all. So I'm not really sure what the worry is. The police are already on our streets anyway. They are very helpful. We really like them to there. We want them there. So please install those stop signs. Thank you. And as you know, I spoke with Dave Bush about making sure that if they do go up that we are enforcing and evaluating uh, essentially because I think it's good to have the data that goes with it ultimately. See so if they're not working then we pull them out and we go to the next steps at that point. If they are, great, we keep them and uh, then figure out other things we might need to do on the street. So, so thank you very much. Sure. Let's see Aaron McCready, but uh, might be Ross. Uh, we'll see which one. Hello, this is Aaron McCready from 35 Hyde Boulevard. I've got Ross here with me too. I also wanted to comment on the motion for testing out the stop sign idea. I really, I really like and appreciate the the idea to put the stop sign there and to have it be a study. I just a six month study. I don't think that there would be anything wrong with doing a six month study. I also support Liz's idea of having having further data collected, but I don't think it has to be an either or. I think during the original study that was done, it was when the pandemic hadn't lifted yet and people weren't back to work. It was kind of uh, the golden era for us on Hyde because it was quieter. But unfortunately, that's when they did the study. And I feel like we keep talking about that study, but it was also the measurements were taken, I believe, near the soccer field um, or just a little after. And so it wasn't really where people get up to max speed. Personally, I've almost been hit three times. And you might think, Hyde is so wide. How could you possibly get hit when you've got that kind of perception on such a wide street? But what I've had happen at least twice is cars will stop when you go to cross, cross the crosswalk and I've actually had cars that tried to go around those cars that stopped for me walking the dog and they almost they almost hit us as we were crossing in front of the car that was stopped. So it it really is scary, even with cars stopping when we try to go across the street, you don't feel 100% confident you're going to not get hit if there are other cars coming. 
Um, so I just, I really appreciate the effort in the 10 years that we've been here. I really haven't seen a whole lot done that's made an impact. And I don't think it could hurt to just try it out for six months. Thanks, Aaron. And uh, thank you to Ross, who has kind of been uh, riding me on this for sure. And uh, actually was the person that drove me to talk to Carla, our uh, other attorney, uh, who uh, we were going through the vehicle and traffic code to just kind of uh, get educated on what our capacity is or isn't uh, from a legal standpoint. So thanks to Ross as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go to Nathan Ward. Nathan, just so you know, uh, I sent all the emails so they could become part of the record. You did send one re with respect to signage. So uh, that is already part of the record, but if you want to say anything else or even repeat it, it's up to you, but I just want you to be aware it is part of the record. Hi, Nathan Ward, One Hyde Boulevard. Yeah, I'm just going to repeat what I sent out uh, in the email. Um, so I do think the stop sign would help improve the pedestrian um, crosswalk at Chapman and Hyde. Uh, there's a couple of things that I see concerning with stop signs. Uh, you know, not everyone stops at stop signs, as you could see at uh, Hyde and Malta. You know, several people either don't come to a complete stop or they just blow right through it. Um, another issue, and this is not pedestrian safety, but um, you know, people around once they come to a stop, they will just floor it and create a lot of noise. Uh, I hear that again. At Malta and Hyde, there's a you know a lot of loud trucks and cars that just get right back up to the normal speed that they were going before they stopped. Uh, what what I would recommend, and the pedestrian and bicycle study mentioned this, is installing an RRFB, which is uh, one of those uh, rectangle flashing um, that a pedestrian would push a button. It would start flashing, making the cars aware that there's a pedestrian needing to cross, and then the cars are required by state law to stop for pedestrians. So that flashing uh, makes people or the or the cars aware that there's someone trying to cross. With a stop sign at night, you don't see the people that are trying to cross. So even though you might stop, you could just keep on going and not see someone that's trying to cross. Um, because the, the roads are so wide, you're not going to be able to see them on the edges of um, of the road. So it is, uh, you know, a couple thousand dollars to install one of these. They're pretty effective. Um, studies have shown that they are, um, you know, effective at making vehicles stop and letting pedestrians cross. Um, yeah, so I would recommend amending this motion to perhaps have a three months with a stop sign and a th three months with this RRFB um, signage and see which one works best and then go with the one that wins. Thanks. A couple quick notes on that. Uh, we are attempting to put stop signs in the middle zone uh, as well uh, to make sure that it is visible for a driver that might not see the edges uh, as well uh, in that situation. So Jeff and I were talking about ways to get signage that could do that without it walking away, essentially. Uh, so we're looking into that. Uh, also, our RFBs are not something you just go and test. They are actually very costly. So it's something uh, that is, I think, part of, uh, or at least listed as uh, figures in the tap CMAC listing. Uh, it, it's in five figures, I believe, uh, for those. So it's not just something you go out and do. Uh, it's something that you kind of take as a next step measure, which is what DOT does with respect to crosswalks generally. Uh, you don't automatically get our RFDs, you get signage and striping, and then if that fails, which normally means something bad is happening, uh, they go to our RFDs at that point, uh, only after it's proven. Um, let's see, Jason Townley, I believe, is next up on Zoom. Hey, uh, Jason Townley, 31 Hyde Boulevard. Um, I don't know if stop signs are the right thing to do, but I definitely would like to see what they uh, or how they can affect and help us uh, walking. I've It's been three times within the last couple of weeks where we've almost been uh, mowed down uh, by drivers. And it's walking the kids to school as Carrie does. It's walking a dog. Um, and it's the most common thing that happens as we're trying to cross is we get halfway 
and I think Harry mentioned this as well, uh, and Aaron too, but uh, we get halfway and the other motorist doesn't stop. Um, and one instance we had the person who stopped drove over to the car that didn't stop and had to lock up their brakes, roll down their window and scold them and let them make them aware of the, uh, the crosswalking signs. I think one of the major issues with the Chapman Street intersection is the fact that right now we can't see the crosswalk signs that are up due to tree blockage. And that's going to be a problem going forward with the stop signs up. Um, I think one of the, the best things we did so far was to put the signs up on the crosswalks. Uh, I know the one on Hyde Boulevard did get mowed down. Uh, I saw it happen. It happened to be an 18 wheeler uh, coming up Hyde Boulevard and clipped it. Um, and it got hit twice. I think the second time was a NIMO truck coming out of Columbia Extension. They were doing some utility work up there. So it definitely makes the intersections tighter. It's a, a great traffic calming uh, element, but I'm I'm very curious to see how these stop signs uh, would work, especially uh, since the ineffectiveness of the one on Malta Avenue uh, just today had somebody go straight through the intersection. In fact, the house that's at the end of Hyde Boulevard, uh, when spring started to happen, um, we watched the couple that sits there watch the people blow through the stop sign and point at them. So it's it's a tough thing. I, I think as a village, uh, we need to do better uh, at actually being respectful to crosswalks. Uh, I see local residents actually speeding through and uh, not stopping at stop signs as well. It's easy to do. I get it. In the older days, we had a manual transmission. It was more of a pain in the butt because you had to take it out of gear, do whatever. We all have automatics. It's literally a gas and a brake. It's not that difficult. So uh be interesting to see how this all unfolds. Uh, I'm My daughters are fourth generation in this house. So uh, I used to play soccer in the streets on Hyde Boulevard. And there were no cars. And our surrounding developments are huge now including malta and uh boston lake and uh the town of boston and they're only going to get bigger so that's all thank you thank you jason showing your age so uh, talking about standard transmissions come on now you're not that old uh anybody else in the room seeing no hands we will close public uh comment agenda items only Gotta get a motion to approve the items on the consent agenda. Well, first off, I should always ask, do we want to remove either one of those two? We'll discuss uh, separately. They're, they're both in the budget. Right. Uh, Memorial Day Parade is not. Uh, however, we did have uh, some excess uh, from different events that did not hit their numbers. So uh, it would basically be just reallocating to that fact. And then in next year's budget, we are including line item from Memorial Day Parade. In the thousands. As, as of right now. Yeah. What's it for compared to last year? Zero. No, I mean, what is it literally being spent on versus last year when we didn't have it? Well, she gave an entire listing of the $4,900 of spending. The problem is that their spending numbers have gone up precipitously and we haven't funded it in quite some time. And it started asking about this last year, but they never had sent in the budget request uh, in that situation. So Billy Joe uh, had hit me up uh, last week and also Tom Milton. And so we're trying to work together here to make sure a major parade in our street is essentially going to be funded uh, properly and continue. So you're keeping it in is okay through this uh, round here. Got to get a motion to approve the items on the following consent agenda one and two. Okay. Trustee Fundanza, yes, Trustee uh, Price Bush discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motions? Carry or motion carries for those uh, consent agenda motions. Can I get a motion setting a public hearing related to the Village of Boston Spa's fiscal year 2025 tentative budget during the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees on April 8, 2024, at 7 1 p.m.? Trustee Fundesa? Trustee Price Bush discussion. Is that going to give us enough time to have budget workshops? Well, as I had suggested about the amended motion there, the 3rd and 4th of April uh, was uh, what I had suggested the Wednesday and Thursday before that. Uh, remember, this doesn't finalize the budget. This is just a, a statutory requirement for a public hearing. Uh, my guy, Blue point, I, this is something the state requires to have a discussion or a two-way. 
on budget with the uh, public. And so that's why it's, this is the required yeah, one. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. It'd just be good to have the workshop so, prior. And, yeah, yeah, and also- We can go to the 22nd with their regular meetings and still be okay with the budget. So you've got another meeting scheduled and then whatever else you need in between. So- I, I thought it was no. the 20th was the deadline for- No, no, the 20th was the deadline for tentative budget, March 20th. The uh, budget itself is April 30th or May 1st. Okay. Um, and the public hearing, we can open it the 8th, even if there are more budget workshops to do, the hearing could remain open yeah. beyond the 8th. And we could have like a special meeting if necessary. It is important to have the workshops before the public hearing so people know why numbers are the way they are, not just what the numbers are. Um, so yeah, I'm all, I'm all right with having it the 8th, um, given this new opening, this new conversation about having workshops before then, and also um, with the understanding that at the eighth, maybe we don't close the public workshop, uh, we can we could continue um, if there are additional workshop. I mean, we continue the public hearing if there's additional workshops that need to be happening. I will address part of that comment later where it's more appropriate for now. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, can I get a motion approving payment to Keller Construction of $159,377.91 where the work reflected on the Pulse Street Mill Emergency Project C attachment? Mm -hmm. Trustee Fundenza. Second. Trustee Raymond, discussion. Under budget, uh, we're going to probably keep the paving work uh, in house. Uh, obviously, it's an emergency project, so it wasn't in the budget per se. It will uh, be reflected out of ARPA funds that are in fund balance, though I don't consider those fund balance funds per se. Uh, it's, it's listed as such on our um, AFR, but those were earmarked funds for specific types of projects. Uh, this should we, by the time we're done with this, enough for the generator uh, for the wells 4A, 4B, uh, which is discussed in the budget uh, discussion as well for next year at this point. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I get a motion authorizing the village's Department of Public Works to install stop signs at the intersection of Chapman Street and High Boulevard in all directions, pursuant to the powers afforded to the village in New York State Vehicle and Traffic Law, Section 1640A1, for a six month evaluation period during which the Village of Alsa Spa Police Department will provide enforcement of the new regulation at this intersection and provide periodic reports to the board about the effectiveness of the signs in enhancing slash protecting pedestrian safety on and around High Boulevard. Should the vote, should the board not vote to remove the signs at the end of six months, then the signs will remain in place. Mm -hmm. Trustee Fundenza, Second. Trustee Price Bush, discussion. Um, I, I have a little bit to say. Um, so I wasn't really involved um, in the formulation of the proposal for stop sign. Um, for those who don't know, I, uh, I work for New York State DOT. I am a traffic engineer and I specialize in um, traffic engineering and solutions for pedestrian safety. Um, and I would just have to say that um, typically stop, always stops are used as a last resort um, for pedestrian safety, not the first attempt. Um, there's numerous studies to indicate that putting all way stops in don't appreciate, appreciably increase the safety of pedestrians because it, it essentially lulls them into a false sense of security. And also a static sign um, tends to go into the background and particularly on a road um, where traffic volumes per approach aren't balanced. Um, there's a pre predominant amount of traffic on high as compared to the Chapman approach. So it is naturally would be considered the main street, which typically you don't put traffic control on if you have lower volume side streets. Uh, there's also a whole, um, um, there had been mentioned um, regarding speed control. Um, stop signs are explicitly not to be used for speed control. And that's in the manual of uniform traffic control devices, which is published by the FHWA. 
Uh, New York State requires all municipalities to comply with the Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices. Uh, Noncompliance could potentially affect uh, future funding from different state and federal agencies. Um, so I don't agree with the installation of stop signs, at least without at least doing some sort of analysis. There is a always stop warning analysis also within the MUTCD. Um, that is typically done before stop signs are installed. Um, I would recommend that we at least do that to see if stop signs are warranted based on those warrants. If they're not, then stop signs shouldn't be there. Um, again, stop signs are not supposed to be used for speed control. Um, and it seems like that's this is kind of what this is actually about because uh, pedestrian safety, as I said, isn't necessarily augmented with a stop sign. Um, and also it's kind of like cutting your leg off because you've you got a scratch. Um, if you're targeting when pedestrians are using that, which because it's uh, the school had also uh, in, included a request or I don't know if you asked them to write a letter along with the- Ed and I for like two years have been discussing this and I actually yeah. did a site visit uh, about a year and a half ago, I was saying. Right. Um, but uh, a more targeted approach would be what uh, Nathan Ward said would be an RFD. They actually have been proven to actually increase driver awareness because of the flashing beacons. Whereas a static sign um, becomes just part of the background. Um, there's numerous studies to support this. And uh, there's also numerous studies that say, um, that conclude that by putting in all-way stops, you will increase the travel speeds on the links between those stops. So the area where Box Archer Field is and every once a soccer ball goes out and rolls between the cars, we're going to probably increase the travel speed of individuals there. Um, and also on the southern portion, it will likely increase it because people want to make up the time they lost from stopping. Uh, I, as I said, I personally don't think this is the correct course of action. Um, there's nothing illegal about it. There's no statute saying you can't do it, but there's a preponderance of evidence saying you shouldn't do it and it's not the proper thing to do. Um, I believe there may be um, temporary uh, RRFDs that are used in construction purposes that may be applicable for a trial. <laughs> and I would be willing to look into that to see if that's viable before we go ahead and just slap stop signs in. Um, the other thing that I would like to point out is that, um, you know, to go back about cutting off your leg. Um, so if they're about school, uh, you know, uh, school pedestrians, that's one hour in the morning and one hour in early afternoon that those pedestrians are tending to be walking there. And uh, so a stop sign is 24-7, 365, year after year after year after year. Um, that doesn't really target you know, doesn't provide a solution to what you're looking for. Um, whereas an RFP would actually target that and has been proven through numerous studies um, to be far more effective than all the stops. Um, I would recommend that. Um, I do understand a permanent RFP is a significant cost, but I mean, I would think our kids are worth it. Um, so I, I would... Uh, I would definitely recommend that if it turned out that if we can find temporary RFDs and, and they're effective, that we consider using that as a permanent solution. Um, that was actually what was one of the recommendations in the uh, pedestrian and bicycle plan. That was <clears throat> um, created with the help of the Capital Region Transportation Council. 
who is one of those sources that requires us to comply with MUTCD if they want to receive funding. Um, I would also add that the Governor's Tra Traffic Safety Committee also has pedestrian safety guidance. Um, they put that out a number of years ago. It's uh, the Pedestrian Safety Action Plan. And within the Pedestrian Safety Action Plan, they have many, many treatments for improving pedestrian safety that's been proven by numerous studies. Not one of them is an all-way stop. So, um, and there's a reason for that. So, um, but RFBs are in there and there's other treatments as well as actually the treatment that's currently there now is one of the basic initial treatments um, is putting up signs on both sides. Uh, we may find out that maybe just clearing the brush and improving sight distance or the trees might have a positive effect without even in installing anything further. Because if they're partially obscured um, and people come up on them late, that you know, there's breaking reaction time and stopping distance. Um, if they can see them farther out, they would see a pedestrian farther out as well. And they would at least see the signs knowing that the potential of pedestrian could cross. I would consider those before installing stop signs. And then lastly, if we do as a last resort, want to put in an all-way stop there, we need some of scientific metric as to if it's actually improved the situation, that there is some sort of improvement. Um, as uh, Liz Cormo said, anecdotal evidence is not scientific. Um, what people feel is not scientific. We need actual data. And so we need a baseline prior to those installations. And that would include, um, you could, could get tube caps so that you have general link volumes and speeds. But again, we're not supposedly not putting this in for speed control. Um, we could also get probably turning movement counts and pedestrian counts, and all these would be free through the CRTC, uh, wouldn't cost us anything. Um, and I think that we should do that at the very least before we put stop signs in, so at least we know what we had before we put them in, and then actually compare um, using the standard met metrics which would be doing a crash analysis also prior to installing a stop sign and then after, because that's how you determine the effectiveness of something. Did it, did it increase pedestrian safety by reducing pedestrian vehicle conflicts? Um, I think that this is necessary. It, in my position at DOT, I've seen many, many municipalities just slap stop signs in because, you know, it's a cheap, cheap, easy fix. Um, it, and, but it's not necessarily the proper fix. And quite often they're inappropriate and ineffective in accomplishing the task of pedestrian safety and certainly speed control. So um, I'm not recommending that we do this at the time. I would rather table this motion um, until such a time that we've gotten some uh, base data, and we can also look into uh, the possibility of temporary RFPs so that we could test those out prior to going to a last resort, which would be an always stop. Are you making a motion to table? He did not make a motion to table. He, if he wants I to am making a motion to table. I'll second. Okay, roll call. Trustee Baskin? Yes. Trustee Von Dantha? No. Trustee Price Bush? No. Trustee Raymond? Yes. Mayor Rossi? No, Liz, please. Um, okay, so at this point, I would like to respond to your filibuster. Um, memory serves my first uh, crossing of uh, stop signs in this village just going up was on Court Street and wondering why the stop sign would be placed in the middle of a hill. So she in an area with inclement weather and how it would be handled. And Noah Shaw, who I no longer on the board, I had 
uh, lived over there and had requested it because of the dangerous speed slash pedestrian safety over there on court. And Sean, I don't remember you raising your voice on that one. You suggested in our back and forth today that there was study or analysis done. And I actually called Mayor Romano today to ask him if that is the case. The answer is no, it was not. Um, yeah, and, I, and never, I never, I never suggested I not, that. I, I did not interrupt you. And yes, you did. Okay, you, and I asked you for the data and it never came up. That's why I called him. And also I asked uh, Jennifer, because I wasn't in earlier uh, this afternoon, uh, to check with Bob Cavan on the same and Chief Bush happened to be there and they both stated no, it was not. And so we have had stop signs pop in interesting areas without studies. In this case specifically, I've been mayor now for, my goodness, uh, it will be two years next week, I guess, just about uh, here. And it is the single most requested item to do something about high boulder. Hands down, not even close. And one of the first things you and I did, uh, Bernie, if I remember correctly, two years ago, was we tried to reach out to see what a study would cost you because we're told, hey, you got to do studies, got to do studies for stop signs. And LaBella basically gave us a price tag initially, at least, of I want to say 11,000, give or take. I remember it was some outlandish number, where it felt like. And stated, well, you know, we probably won't give you the feedback you're looking for in the first place. So why go waste the money if you're not going to get the satisfaction of making a positive change? So time goes on. It's been how many years since the Pedestrian Bicycle Master Plan's release? It's got to be, I think, three almost, right? And we sit here with nothing done. And Furthermore, all this talk about RFBs and uh, speed humps, if uh, speed is what you're looking for, raise crosswalk, mm -hmm. it's not a simple question for every neighbor on high because a lot of people don't want their entire way of life distracted with all these physical enhancements to the street. They kind of want the street they bought a house on to live in and just have maybe a minor interference with a stop sign or something like that, that people will honor and respect in the first place. So all this talk of sharrowing and the raised humps and striping this and striping that, it's not a consistent des desire for all that stuff on High Boulevard. Talk to several of your neighbors over there. And it's, it's an interesting reaction as you go through the list of uh, things that are proposed. But it seems like everybody lands on the idea at the very least, put up some simple stop signs. And here we go. And I'm not even saying to do it permanently. I don't know exactly what's going to be the result of it, but we're going to try to set it up for success. Uh, as I said, we're going to try to find middle signs so that you can see them in the middle of the street and also make sure that, as you suggested, we pair back some of the uh, branches if that's happening. But, you know, RRFBs, as I said to Nathan earlier today, uh, my page, those are great also to strobe uh, a light into your neighbor's uh, homes. Uh, and, you know, with somebody that is to face uh, scrutiny on a sign uh, where the Hanford is, uh, you know, creating light and whatnot, uh, it's not a simple thing. You don't want your neighbors to feel like they're getting strobed to death all the time either with those things. And so I even feel bad if we put a light on top of the stop sign, it, there won't be a strobe by any stretch of the imagination. That might even be interfering, but we'll see what we can come up with to be respectful to the neighbors, but effective on the street at the same time. It's a balance. We're also going to utilize the Your Speed is sign that the school district bought for our purposes of using it in that zone. And uh, Chief Bush has asked, actually asked me if I wanted to possibly look into buying village owned ones. Uh, the one we currently have is pretty useless, unfortunately. It doesn't have uh, much of a charge on it. And so something that could last a week in the field instead of a day in the field, essentially. And uh, it's something to consider as well to possibly get one on either side of the street so we could avoid the idea of speeding up going further down the street and do some self-enforcement because I think our reactions generally when we see those signs are, oh, I'm speeding, I didn't realize that, or maybe I should slow down. All told, the idea here is to keep High Boulevard a very pretty, unusual or unique street in our village in the best way possible while keeping it safe. First step is to do some subtle changes to see what we can do. 
And that's why it's being proposed. I'm not gonna sit here any longer. As I said to somebody the other day, you have three options, do nothing, put in stop signs and the speed signs I'm talking about, or go the extra step to the, let's say larger enhancements to the street. I said, doing nothing is no longer one of the options. So it's one of two things now. And this is the one I think that is most universally accepted for now while we see how it works. And if you have other considerations, it's great, Sean, it's three years later. I'm, I'm glad you're feeling the need now to go and research these other things. I am truly and go ahead, but for now, the folks want action, we're gonna take some action here. Um, I just like to say we did take action. We did put up per the PSAP um, pedestrian crossing signs. And that's the first step that you would normally take. Um, the next step would be RFBs um, in that progression. Now, um, I was unaware that you were gonna put in your speed is signs I would suggest putting in your speed is signs without the stop signs and try that for a six month period to see if that's improved. Because I think the big, big issue here is really um, speed. Everybody, all the uh, testimonials I heard, people go flying by. Read your emails because so, that's not the only testimonials we've gotten. Right. People just trying okay. to cross the street is an issue. That is over and over. And a correct, a correct one of the things that has to do with that is because it's uncontrolled is speed. So if we're able to reduce the speed, that would give people more time to react to pedestrians. Um, so she, I, she I would recommend, you know, and they've been proven to be effective. Stop signs have not. So um, I would recommend doing that first. And if you feel there is an appreciable change, within a three to six month period, then you can always put in stop signs. The only other thing I would add is what metric are you gonna to use to measure if the, regarding improvement? I trust our police and their enforcement. Well, the police aren't qualified for that. Uh, yes, they actually They're not are. traffic engineers. No, no, but they see our streets day to day, uh, Sean, and they also well, tell us what I, the enforcement numbers well, are. Well, please, uh, I, I'm so please sick of, find I'm sick a of detailed detailing. scope Stop of the metric voice. they're going to use. raising your voice. I'm just sick of you belittling employees and staff of our village. I'm they not are, belittling. Yes, I'm not qualified are. to be a policeman. No, but you would know what crime if you saw it generally, wouldn't you? I, I, okay. I don't know uh, because I'm We're not necessarily roll. versed in right, the I have something to say. Uh, we're, still still in in yeah, We're still in discussion. We're still in discussion. I'd like to say, add my two cents. Um, I think it is uh, sad that we have um, this discussion and our traffic engineer sitting at the table, we have on our He's board, our traffic engineer. on our board, we have a professional traffic engineer and he was not involved in this conversation until Friday when this motion appeared on the agenda. And uh, he, so you've had, you've had discussions with the police, you've had it with DPW, you've asked them to send you letters with the schools, you had a whole, and people, you've asked for uh, feedback from people. This has been going on for weeks and weeks and weeks and months, and you have never seen fit to involve our traffic engineer on the board. And it, it's just typical of how you exclude members of this board from important conversations. He has an expertise you don't have and no one else has. Now I have to say, um, I'm not a traffic engineer and uh, you know, to me, oh, stop sign, that makes intuitive sense. But you know what, I'm willing to listen to the science and the science is based on repeated studies, hundreds of instances. And um, if I hear from an expert that the science says to do X, that's where I'll, I'll lean because the people who give feedback don't know the profession there, you know, I might say, yeah, it makes perfect intuitive sense, but it's not what the science shows. And so we should listen to the science and listen to the expert we have in the room and we should tap people who have that expertise. And I think it's a sad uh, emblem and symptom of, of uh, the exclusivity that you, uh, how you operate um, in uh, secret and without transparency and without an inclusion of this entire board. Thank you, Ben, except I think I started this conversation by stating that one of the first things we did when we took office was we talked to our traffic engineers. I spoke with Laney at VHB as well, who was involved with this pedestrian bicycle master plan in the first place to discuss where the data was. And she admitted that as somebody else stated, the data came from one side of the street and therefore was not complete data. 
And it's an interesting uh, statement when you get down to it because we use that document so often and yet it, it's admittedly an imperfect document for what its intended purpose was. That said, we've had the back and forth with our engineers. Sean, while I appreciate he's a traffic engineer, he is not the village's traffic engineer. I've talked with the village's traffic engineers uh, um, matters like this and have gotten opinions and thoughts and ideas. And then we've also talked to the folks that live on these streets that said, we have to do something. They reach out to me constantly. And I don't mind that fact. It's how I get educated on, we need to make changes on certain things. And here we are. And so at this point, I'd like to call for a roll call vote and you can give your uh, reasoning for your vote uh, as you make it, as you know. Trustee Baskin. Uh, I'm going to follow Sean's lead and uh, vote no on this um, for the reasons that uh, Trustee um, Raymond gave um, and hope uh, for um, a continued um, following of, of what best practice actually is. Trustee Van Dainza Perez. Yes, um, I frequent high boulevard is the way I have to go for my commute. And I have witnessed the very uh, instances where people are stopped and then other vehicles uh, are impatient and go around uh, a vehicle who stopped for a pedestrian. So uh, more signage is good in my opinion. It's good that we're testing this out. I appreciate also uh, tangentially that we're gonna have the um, your speed is signs. Um, so, we're, we're testing it out. We're moving in a great direction. And Sean, I, I, I appreciate your willingness to look into the um, other option, the RF, RRFB. Uh, you know, there's no reason why we can't do one and then also still look into the other. Thanks. Trustee Price Bush. Yes. And I feel that the parents on High Boulevard have a valid concern. Um, most of us in here have children and remember when our children were young, six months as a test stop sign, I don't think it's gonna hurt anything. It might help. Crosswalks, we've heard that the crosswalks really haven't been working as we expect them to. So I think it's worth waiting six months. Trustee Raymond. Uh, no, um, and again, um, just to reiterate, um, stop signs, um, are, are not a panacea. Um, I know they get used that, they're politically expedient, um, but they're not the proper thing in this case, if you're really interested in pedestrian safety. Uh, I would also say I, we need to have a solid written metric uh, of the method for comparison if we're actually going to make a scientific conclusion regarding whether the stop signs have improved pedestrian safety. So if the police are going to be the data collectors, I would like to know what data they're collecting and how they're gonna compare it and what metrics are they gonna use to conclude that it has created a safer environment for pedestrians. Mayor Rossi. I think uh, we know who our comparers, comparers are going to be, and it's going to be the residents on and around High Boulevard at the end of the day. They're going to tell us if it's gotten better, if it's gotten worse, or if it's straight line for the six-month period, and what they think we should do next with respect to those signs. I think that's going to be the best evidence you get, ultimately, the people that have to feel safe or unsafe under the conditions. The police are going to help add some data to it, by all means, but this is one of those situations where I'd rather err on getting enforcement and safety out there than not after two years of kind of sitting back and listening to the back and forth and kind of just twiddling my thumbs and doing nothing. And, you know, we got lucky that those uh, middle signs uh, got sold at a nice cheap price to us by a PTA. I can't remember which one it was that we were able to buy those in a good quantity but that was a lucky scenario. Now we need to kind of invest in ourselves in a way that we start moving this forward, protecting our <coughs> residents, our school children, et cetera. And I'm thrilled that the school district is aligned with us in this and is willing to help out where they can because they take it seriously as well. My vote is yes, it is three to two, the motion carries. 
Got to get a motion approving the expenditure of $3,200 to Stanko and Sons Heating and Cooling for the emergency repairs to the hot water tanks at Union Fire Company number two and authorizing the mayor to, to execute any paperwork related to such emergency repairs. Mm -hmm. Trustee Fundenza. I'll say it. Trustee Baskin, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Got to get a motion awarding the bid for the 2024 Village of Balsa Spa Mowing Contract to Balsam Lawn and Landscape for $17,500 for the season and authorizing the mayor to execute the agreement after review by the village attorney. Trustee Fundenza. I'll say it. I'll give it to Trustee Baskin. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I have a point of order. I, was, um, I'm, I would like to make a motion to schedule budget workshops for all departments, agencies, organizations, boards, and committees of the village provided village funds prior to final budget hearing and approval. I say it again. Can you say I it? Made a, excuse, hold on. I made a motion. Do you read that? Are you reading one? Are you? I made a motion to schedule budget workshops for all departments, agencies, organizations, boards, and committees of the village provided village funds prior to final budget hearing and approval. I made oh, the motion. motion. No, I made the motion. Oh, Sean, Sean's making said, the motion. No, I, no, I made the motion. Thank you. Oh, you're making the motion. I it's the Sean's motion. motion. It doesn't it, we don't assign motions in more than so it's my motion. She seconded it. Uh -huh. So that's the way discussion. you get control over the motion. All right, let's discuss. Well, now at this point, yeah. I'm going to make a motion to table. Just, well, we're discussing. No, too bad. The motion to table is what superseded twice tonight. No, no, no. I you don't motion, know. I make a motion. If it's in the table. middle of a discussion, it's a second. If it's in your in the middle of a discussion, you cannot table. Roll call vote, please. If you're table, in the middle the of table, a dis this, this happened. Is this is what intended. happened last time. He interrupted the discussion the when he knew that we weren't finished talking about it, and you cannot use tabling to to cancel and interrupt and stop a discussion. I'm yeah, sorry. This is just voice, censoring free this speech. This is what you're no, doing. We are going to have this motion because later. Because you're later. because you're trying to shut us down from talking, we raise our voices. And if people don't like it, they're in the wrong place at the wrong time. The um the I am, actually, I, I need actually, to discuss. If you continue to raise your voice, you'll be asked to leave. Fine. You know what? I am in order. We have a discussion. No, you're not. The you're actually out of order. Right you are, now you are not table allowed to second. table before the Seven. discussion is done. Yes. I, I'm waiting for you to finish. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So your question is relative to the order. I understood that the footnote, and I may be wrong, is relative to number nine. Right. They they right. raised a ruckus that it was not put with the other motions. So I'm making the motion and then tabling the motion so we can get it to nine to appropriate. Nine. Okay. And the rules of of uh, procedure state that. Um, you're not allowed to interrupt discussion um, when board members are speaking and it, and tabling is not a reason to interrupt. That's not in our rules yes. procedure. Yeah, no, you're not allowed to interrupt. There's no reason to interrupt. You can't just stop conversation. You did it twice tonight, there's, then. there's no provision in the rules of procedure for cutting off discussion. Okay, so there isn't. Like to make a point? I, I just understood it to mean that He's doing his mayor announcements mm -hmm. or number eight. Mm -hmm. And then you you will be able to discuss at nine. Am I yep. incorrect? So it wasn't necessarily an interruption. It was just a, a wrong or no, no, no. What what well because you're not here regularly, what what you need to know is that this is highly unusual. Yeah. That according to the rules of Robert's procedure, rules not no, it's not it's not Robert's it rules. Robert's no, rules. ask Carla and she'll say we don't follow Robert's rule. Uh, um, according to our rules of procedure, anyone who submits a motion before noon on Thursday is in, to, to the entire board, which is what Sean did, um, has the right to have that motion on the agenda. It's on the agenda. And this is typical of the, um, the uh, disgust that Frank has for the, the, me and Sean. He will not put the motion where it belongs because the motion should be with all the other motions. Not at the end, it's never, we've never had a motion as a footnote in small font at the bottom of an agenda. It goes with all the other motions and the disdain you show by putting it there, I find disgusting, frankly. And it, but it's typical and I'm glad you did it because it, it visualizes his, his attitude towards the rest of us. And I'm sorry, but this needs to go with the other motions and you are not allowed to table. You are not allowed to table something. You can't, 
Ben, introduce a motion, open up discussion, ben, and use tabling to shut it down. Ben, you can't do that. You are out of order at this point. A motion. I think you're out of order, order, Frank. Most of the table has been seconded. I'm all right. I'm, I'm asking point, Mary not to not to support the tabling because all we want to do is discuss the motion. We just want to discuss the motion. So an or, a a a a vote for tabling is. What are you doing? Are we going my, to discuss this later? Are we discussing this later? Right. Yes. We are tabling it to the end of this meeting? No, no, no. To nine. 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 Why are we tabling this to nine? Just to nine. number nine. Why? Number nine. Not nine o'clock. Number nine. Why are we even doing that? Because it's relevant to budget. It's up to the treasury. Right. All right. As long as it's right there. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Oh. I thought you were tabling it. I thought you were tabling it till some other time. Let's hear Stephanie on that one. <laughs> Roll call vote. Well, this, it's a typical, this is so unusual, this situation. It's not normal. So it's like, what is happening? I can understand your confusion. Yeah, thank you. But number eight, you're up. Well, hold on. We have first have to vote. Okay. All in favor of the table to number nine. Aye. I'm Aye. voting no because it should go with every other motion. <laughs> Opposed, four to one. It's approved. Here's announcements. Uh, briefly here, because uh, I'll have two in a row here, no matter what. Uh, first off, thank you to our events task force and also to town of Milton uh, for a wonderful job on the postponed Easter egg hunt uh, yesterday. Uh, it was a tough decision to postpone it because that forecast was just all over the place on uh, Friday into Saturday. And uh, I think we made the right decision, as you can see, but still we didn't know uh, if we'd get enough volunteers, if the kids would show up, the families would show up. And it was a mob scene uh, in that first hour, especially, which it normally is the busiest time, but you couldn't move in certain areas uh, in Milton Community Center. Uh, it was still fire safe, don't worry folks. Uh, but it was uh, incredible. Uh, it, the volunteers did show up and we had a great time, uh, you know, seeing all the kids happy. And also uh, as a little side note, because the American Legion's uh, auxiliary uh, Easter egg hunt got canceled on Saturday, they gave us a bunch of eggs and food and that gave us an entire bins worth of uh, eggs. Uh, with candy in them that I was able to bring over with that bird that's helped to the high school uh, after the Beauty and the Beast performance that overlapped the straight hunt. We were able, able to get some of those kids uh, something they weren't going to be able to get to because they wanted to go see that awesome show uh, at the high school. So this was a win-win all around and the task force deserves huge credit for uh, what they were able to pull off and uh, continue to pull off uh, in our community. Um, you probably have seen it uh, because I think it was up to like over 8,000 views just based off my post today, but Ted's Fish Fry is coming to the Village of Balsa Spa, uh, right on the edge uh, where uh, Pizza Hut was uh, near Ocean State Job Lot. Uh, spoke with John Fisher today, who's the son of the GM, but lives in the Village of Balsa Spa. He'll be the operator manager of this uh, location. Uh, he actually reached out to me last night to flag me to something we saw already. We, we weren't sure. We saw the closing uh, was happening, but you never know if that means they're going to open a store or not. And he said, hey, we're opening, uh, looking for the fall. And uh, you know, we walked through a couple of things that they'll need to do. Um, they're going to replace the roof, it sounds like, and do some changes inside. So it'll take some time and make sure that uh, they have all their permitting and everything else. So uh, we're excited for that. They're aiming to open October and November. And I bring it up because... I know we've talked about some of the concerns about business uh, stuff going on in the village, you know, that the challenges that we're having as much as anybody else in this area. And a moment like this is a good reminder that we're doing something right. The BSBPA is doing something very right. And while we can still get a lot more quality businesses in some of our spaces right now, it's just a good reminder. Of, it's a good climate that we've created here together over these years and we'll continue to do so. And thanks to Ted's Fish Fry for that great start to the week with that announcement. Um, I think that's about it for now. Uh, we'll go to Treasurer's Report. Uh, not, it's, so I have that, uh, thank you. I'm just gonna print it out, I never did. Uh, let's see, did we all get this? Was this email? Yeah. From Melissa? 
No, that's not. No, but um, okay. Treasury's report. Treasury's oh, report. Okay. Treasury. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. <sighs> I will say uh, that Melissa and I have been have been working last week uh, nonstop to uh, get figures corrected uh, and working with EFDR, LGSS as well. So appreciate her work uh, in getting things into the position where we got a very good overall budget uh, made with accurate figures wherever uh, we had concerns. We double check certain things as well. Uh, she brings it up in her budget preparation after many uh, budget meetings with each of the individual nonprofits as well as uh, department heads. We have a tentative budget. It has been completed and set to be released on Thursday, March 20th. That's already done. Uh, thank you to all who submitted requests and attended those meetings with uh, where the mayor and I looked at year-to-date figures as well as projected amounts in the next fiscal year. Uh, utility information, uh, she provides a chart for water and sewer calculations, including uh, water build and sewer build. Bottom line includes what was billed minus what was received, and then the added penalties as of 3 5 24. I would urge you to go look at uh, that chart if you have any uh, thoughts or questions about how what was the works. date of that email because I can't find it. Oh, it's just the attachment. Yeah, it's the attachment. Right. I meant to print the, the attachments, I never got to it, so I appreciate that. Okay, back to budget for a second. Uh, as Mike pointed out, I did put out a four page uh, summary that I would say please read uh, to the board. Uh, I, I think it explains some of the approaches. A number of projects uh, this year did not get completed uh, or will not get completed by May 31st. And so I uh, especially sat down with Jeff and looked at what we could and couldn't get done and how to handle it. Because to just simply go and budget again with uh, new money for the same project would be basically double taxing uh, of residents, property uh, owners, uh, for the same project, and that's not appropriate. So what we've tried to do is spot where we have things that were unused that will need to be used for that same thing next year and carry the money that will go into the general funds fund balance into the same categories next year. So basically roll it back over into those budget lines in those situations. And I highlighted throughout, uh, or actually I think in one big paragraph of uh, the summary, uh, about $500,000 of those situations. The good news is overall, uh, from what we believe uh, the numbers will look like at the end of fiscal year 24, which is what we're in right now, uh, we're gonna have uh, a widened fund balance per se, uh, even without utilizing what we anticipated we would need to uh, do with fund balance to put it into certain budget lines this year. Now, some of that was intended for some of those projects for sure. But the point being that we never did make the 300 plus thousand dollar transfer into, from fund balance back into budget lines. And we still should have some sizable fund balance uh, spread for this year. So by putting the $500,000 into next year, if you look at the two year overall, we're doing very well, despite some challenges along the way, despite some capital projects we're doing, et cetera. This does not include purposely the John Street water tower and water tower information because those are viewed as capital projects. And we know enough here to say that this, those projects are gonna be funded by increases in water rates specifically. And that's what our uh, revenue advisory committee is working on currently to make sure that there is no effect on the budget itself and the fund balance in the long term uh, by <coughs> these uh, maintenance uh, projects and future maintenance for these for over the next 30 years, et cetera. Been working with uh, that uh, committee because I need to give them the information as we learned it about what the costs would be, what the approaches should be moving forward. So you're not seeing it specifically in the budget, but it's there in that any additional raise in water rates over three and a quarter percent is going to be set aside either into a reserve account, which we were going to try to approve tonight, but because of uh, Carlo's family situation, uh, we're gonna probably do that in two weeks for a water reserve fund for uh, system-wide infrastructure. And we'll have that set aside for any extra money over and above a three and a quarter percent uh, annual uh, rate increase on water. We are noticing sewer still lagging. And so sewer will get the same benefit of rate increase because we need to do that. We need to get sewer uh, fund balance uh, higher here. Uh, we're still struggling to get what we need in that situation, I feel like. And so 
being that it's more or less half the value of water, it is slightly changed. Uh, we're going to go in that direction of keeping that going up at basically the same increase or at least 5% per year uh, to continue where we've made some momentum, but not mastered it perfectly with sewer. All in all, uh, concerns really exist in this budget with unfunded mandates from the state, especially uh, retirement benefits, health care uh, costs, et cetera, down the line. These are things that maybe have been challenging in the past for sure, but we you start getting some predictions from the state and from the county on some of these uh, line items, and it becomes daunting uh, over the next couple of years. And so, yes, we were able to, on the tentative budget at least, stay within the tax cap this year. Uh, however, longer range, we're gonna have to really consider how we're going to handle things because those additional figures are outpacing 2% to say the least. In some cases, we're seeing 40% over two years for some of those line items. That's crazy fast for you know, a budget that only has about $2 million of property taxes that we charge. Uh, and you know, for just to compare things generally, our dollars per thousand for property taxes in the village of Bell Spa would be around 562, give or take. In, for instance, the village of Scotia, they're paying over $15 right now with a very similar uh, equalization rate. And they're looking to break tax cap this year, even with taxes that high. And so it, it puts things in perspective. Services aren't that different between Scotia and Boston Spa, and yet they're paying almost three times the tax rate. They get over $5 million in property taxes for what I understand each year. It's, it's an interesting dichotomy. Uh, but you know our residents deserve the lowest possible taxes we can provide while providing the services we need to do and protecting the infrastructure in the future. And that's the constant balance we reach with budget every year. And so uh, over the next couple of days, I'm getting uh, more specific line item information to all of you so that you can see specifically uh, some of the asks where they were. Uh, you, what you'll realize in our budget, we group 400 level uh, accounting or 004, it says on the budget. Uh, we call 400 on our active fund system. 400 is what we call contractual. So 100 is personal services, 200 is uh, equipment essentially in building improvements. 400 is contractual, which is kind of like that everything else line. But we asked our uh, departments to go 401, 402, 403, 404 for like telephone or this special uh, line, that special line, it, it depends on really the uh, department. And so you'll see 400 grouping all those things together on the budget because that's what our accountants require us to do. The state doesn't want to see all the 401s uh, down. They want to see what's 400. And so that's where it gets a little complicated to go recreate the numbers because you don't just put it right next to the budget line. You got to actually have a separate sheet to show all those things for each department. So that's what I'm trying to get for you. And uh, I talked to Melissa yesterday actually about this, and we agreed that we should be giving that level uh, at this point, and we will be doing so. So I appreciate that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, just one. One curious. I know in the past we couldn't create a water reserve fund because we use part of the water revenues to basically pay village bills. No, no, we, we don't use F fund. That's that's what that was. was. Okay, so yeah. this is going to be a, a, sep a different fund. It, it's basically a branch off of the fund balance. It, it, it sort of sits with it, but it's accounted basically, and it's a lockbox inside of our numbers. And if it's a specific reserve account, we're going to do the upfront permissive referendum for 30 days, and then we can use the money for the intended purpose without a further referendum. Carla wanted to make sure that we could do that for what we're titling this. We're working on just the uh, nomenclature to make sure that we can make it specific instead of type, I think is the other uh, type of reserve account where you don't do the permissive referendum up front, but you do it every time you need to take the money out of it. That, so you want specific, if you don't want to have to go through that every time down the line. So that's what we're working on and making sure. We're also doing one for uh, the library uh, because they want a similar reserve account for uh, state federal funding for this building that uh, they can pour it into. And Mary's been uh, instrumental in connecting us to make sure that that's gonna be happening as well. So uh, don't be surprised when those come at you over the next couple of weeks. Like I said, 
we were trying to get everything done this meeting, but uh, you know the rest of the story of what happened uh, with the Carlos situation. I, I would support a, a creation of a reserve account for um, parks and trees. That's actually a, another one that uh, we can hold off until basically Woods Hollow uh, with that one is my thought. But if you notice, there's three to sixty thousand dollars that's being pushed aside. Uh, the revenues in there, and then it's being shown to be going out. And so it's intended to go either into fund balance or into a reserve account on the tentative budget. So I agree with you, and that was not un that was not uh, specifically mentioned, but that was the intention because looking at the Wiswell Park numbers, we could be going into the three hundreds with respect to Wiswell Park uh, renovations. Ultimately, we'll hear more about that at the next meeting. And we could run, we could uh, apply for uh, grants too that could go yep. into this reserve fund. No need to spend just our own money necessarily, or spend the grant money and then put our own money in the reserve account. Yeah, you know, depending on how you want to look at it. Yeah, but well, yep. grantors might like that we have reserve pay. They know where it's going. Uh, so anyway, uh, if that thanks for the explanation. No problem. Anytime. Uh, now uh, I would like to move to lift off the table and uh, bring back to consideration the prior motion concerning uh, scheduling budget workshops, et cetera. So you have the second to lift off table. Second. And well, if, if you want to, I'm not trying to uh, prompt your vote. Well, no, I'd like to move on. Yeah. Move along. <laughs> uh, all in favor of uh, considering that motion now? Aye. Uh, uh, and opposed? Okay, we will go back to consideration of the motion that was previously tabled that caused consternation across the table. Uh, so I just want to go back to something from the previous meeting because I don't know where this notion that I'm against workshops, this, that, and the other thing it was. My statement in the last meeting was essentially, I don't have a dog in this because I've already sat down with the department heads, et cetera. Uh, I think Sean had agreed the timing for workshops would probably be best after tentative budget so you could identify things you were most concerned about uh, ultimately when you saw the budget. And I'm getting more information for that as well. And then I said, in the meantime, we'd work on figuring out dates. I suggest the first week of April is probably gonna be the right course of action for that. That was what I suggested today in our email. I, and then ultimately I'm saying, look, majority rules here, what departments do you want? Because we have never done every recipient of money. We've never done that, okay? I'm aware of that. I just didn't wanna leave anybody out. <laughs> well, but, but not for nothing, they pretty much, I think, only DSBPA was reduced from what their ask was. Mm -hmm. uh, they had asked for 20,000, we gave them 12.5 on the tentative, uh, which is up from 10.5. Ultimately, Dr. Plot was down a bit, I believe, uh, ultimately too. So yeah, it's balanced. Yeah. Yeah. So a balance, and plus the Belmont stakes. Uh, we obviously want to do what we can to maybe parlay some of that action uh, next year. And that's why they had uh, increased the ask. What a turn of phrase. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch myself doing it. That's how bad that was. Too natural for you. Uh huh. But anyway, so this notion again, I don't think you guys are listening to what I was saying, which essentially tell me the departments we should be doing workshops with so I could work with that. And so today, as you know, I proposed the idea of okay, I'm going to get to the rest of the paperwork here over the next day to day and a half, the worst. By Friday, let me know what department heads you would like to have these workshops with. We'll schedule them on Wednesday the 3rd and to the degree necessary Thursday the 4th. And we all live happily ever after and have time to get to the public hearing. And then we still have one more meeting after that if we so choose. I don't appreciate the whole, oh, you're finally seeing the value of them. I haven't said don't do them. I'm just saying do them in a rational way thoughtful way because look, our department heads work all day and then have to come in for a seven o'clock or eight o'clock meeting. If we don't need to have the meeting, then it's not respectful to drag them into it. They'll come talk to us at some point in our uh, discussions. That was my point in this whole thing. I don't know how the heck you got into this whole, you don't support this thing. Well, I'll, I'll just tell you, I was, um, I guess I was expecting um, you to, to lead the process in terms of mm -hmm. Uh, scheduling budget workshops in uh, early to mid March, as it's been done multiple years in a row, um, and prior to the um, tentative budget, um, so that we could have meaningful input into the budget. Right now, it's more Can of. Can I be a... honest about one thing, Ben? I don't want to interrupt you, but I, I just one thing I want to say to you on that 
because I remember this coming up. I remember sitting through it last year, and here's what was happening. We were throwing darts at a board with no numbers on it at all. And so we were doing this whole, well, that sounds like a good number or good uh, expenditure. So, yeah, we'll consider doing that. It, it sort of turned into a very, for at least tentative budget purposes, unuseful time for that because you didn't know where, where the numbers lay at that point in time. There are, if we took wow. all of our requests, you're going to be seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars over. We know that, okay. And so my job, I feel, as budget officer, is to trim the fat on round one down to something that's reasonable and balanced. And from here, fine tune, find things that you think I underfunded, overfunded, etc. And then it's a lot easier to balance the budget when you know you've got a plus one side to minus the other side in that situation. The way we approached it last year with the earlier workshops wasn't useful, to, at well, least during the budget officer kind of uh, budget. I, I thought it was useful as, as what my expectation was because that's what had happened for a dozen years uh, prior, you know, coming up to this year. In February, I asked, you know, when are we scheduling, but when are you scheduling budget workshops? Because it would be good to have some advance notice about that. And I just feel like there's there's been a void there in terms of just leading the way and scheduling these workshops, sort of waiting like, oh, what the what does the board want? And oh, here comes the tenant budget. Well, that's done now. Um, we still don't have the printout. It just seems very late and um, and uh, feeling like we are having fewer, less and less opportunity and window to actually have meaningful, not just contribution to the budget, but an understanding of what's in the budget. So, you know, I'm not anticipating, oh, I'm going to want to change the budget, you know, up, up and down. Um, but I would like to know, I do have multiple questions about um, uh, within multiple departments. There's a lot of overspending that happened this year. Why? Um, what? And, and then there's a lot of increases. If you have those questions, because I, I had asked us, feel free to send them in to me because I'm happy to tell you what the answer I want, is. I, you know, I want to hear from the department heads and I want, and it's- Often I, they I, don't know why. I, they, they don't. Well, they'll know something. I in past workshops they have provided very valuable information. And what the answer ends up being, um, if I could finish for one second, is that sometimes something gets miscoded, and so we end up having to well, push it, or they don't realize that basically for DPW where the anticipated location for something was supposed to be. So we end up with a labor cost too high on one line, but too low on another line. So you think that they're you know blowing budget on one thing. They're not. It's just that you right. get well, coded well. All right. So, but we can't govern around mistakes. I mean, we just have to, the process, even if we're looking at a number that's wrong, we need to understand what we're looking at. And your tentative budget includes a lot of big increases in various departments. And um, and that isn't just an email like, why? Okay. It's a converse. Uh, it, ideally, in my view, it would be a conversation. Like, is, well, what departments do you have going up that much that weren't explained by rollovers? I'm there's, curious. there's, so police, I don't, yes, but that's new kind. Yeah, I mean, you police, yeah, fire's going up. Uh, Fire you're, goes you're up celebrating, the right. So, this is what, this is not the appropriate venue to be like well, explaining it's, it's everything. Great. It's not possible. Fire, it's not fire possible. police is very uh, this, easy answers to you. This, fire, fire is based on the uh, contracts and the building improvements are us. We're rolling over the apron because the so, apron's going to come in well over budget right. and not going to get done until so next we, year we can't go through the budget at this meeting so that's why i bet i value sean values and hope and the public values public budget workshop so we can <laughs> look at each department in some detail and understand what we're voting for and why and um and why things are the way they are again ideally i would i'm disappointed it wasn't done before the tentative budget but i'm glad that you are open to doing it now. And I sent an email suggesting um, some top priority departments uh, for us to look at. I don't think one hour, if you had one hour, um, two different workshops is enough. It never has been. There's always been uh, at least double that. But um, the, as I put in the email, um, and I sent, I shared an email how this was done in previous years. Um, and it builds on that, but you could have in one day, for example, DPW, Village Hall and Library, uh, day two, fire and police. But again, depending on how long you go, you could combine this into two days and not three. And then day three, park and tree, community on community or committee on the arts, 
and celebration slash events. Those are the things that I'd be most interested in. Um, and I just, I'm, I wish that it, these had just been scheduled, just pro forma, you know, just go ahead I and schedule. I have two people on this board that have been putting out emails. I have two people that have not been replying but in kind those emails. I, I, I get, I, no, I respect, again, I, well, I said last time, not my dog in this fight because I've done my role as kind of a budget, uh, budget officer, okay? So here, I understand it's your venue, it, but all four of your but venues. And I, I'm trying to maintain that. that yeah, it's your but, it, but it's always been the mayor who leads this process. Well, so hold on. I've been waiting, okay. guys. Oh. <laughs> okay, thank you. Stop your um, <laughs> so I, I actually think this is not an unusual process in the sense that when you're at the state level, the governor proposes her budget. And then it's given to the each house in uh, the legislature. Then they pour and pick apart and you know uh, explain their priorities. And um, I, I think it's it's good to kind of have a starting base because I agree. Last year, while interesting, and I loved hearing uh, people's thought processes behind everything, we are, we were kind of aimless a little bit, and that makes it a very difficult process to to even write the budget. So this is not completely out of place. Uh, it's, you know, governor first, then the legislatures, and then it gets voted on. Um, I, I, we're in the middle of it right now. Um, I hope, I don't think it'll be passed on time. That's my, my personal aside, but shocking. <laughs> it's Easter this weekend. It's a little complicated. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I appreciate that you're going to give us kind of a, a breakdown uh, so we can understand it a little bit more in depth. And, um, you know, I, I think going from there, you know, there might be places I'm like, this is fine. You know, it seems pretty clear. And there might be other areas where, um, you know, I'd like some more explanation or some better understanding about uh, why these requests remain this way, or even perhaps like, why did we, how, what, what exactly was happening that things need to be rolled over. But I, I won't know that until I look more deeply at the budget first and then be able to say, and that's what happens again at the state. They look at the budget, the legislatures look at the budget, and then they have what they're called their conference committees that both houses come together. And then they also, uh, all the uh, budget teams uh, talk with the governor's budget team. So um, this, I think, is a process that's gonna, you know, be able to get us our opportunity to weigh in on the budget. And also, you know, if it needs adjustment, it needs adjustment and we can figure that out. So, um, I, I appreciate the, gov uh, the governor's efforts. Wow. <laughs> I'm good tired. Not on your life, kid. <laughs> uh, I appreciate the mayor's efforts to, um, you know, kind of move us along and um, we will get there. And I think we'll be able to, uh, we'll hope now, hoping that the budget doesn't, the state budget doesn't interfere with my schedule, um, that we'll be able to look at this a little more closely on, uh, you know, next week, I think you proposed, right? I, I saw Ben's email later today, and I kind of concur with the departments he listed. Um, that would be, you know, sufficient for me because those are the ones that have had the biggest changes um, or had the biggest overages to the current budget. Um, you know, I'd like to find out you know, what happened. Um, but um, I think based on that email, those departments are probably sufficient. We wouldn't have to go any further. You hey, just out of fairness, real quick, because the, the, it's a fair question to ask what the rollovers were and what happened. I can briefly do this so that you, everybody here has an understanding quickly here. Well-generated project uh, we talked about, it's just, it was one of the things that moved to the back of the line uh, to a certain degree, but Jeff is working on it with Obella right now and getting that actually moving forward. Uh, that was $125,000 ARPA funds that were uh, rolled. The 66 Front Street Retaining Wall and Vault project just got held up because uh, we had some back forth with LaBella on that one, but it is, uh, again, moving forward. Uh, they're uh, getting their stuff together for us uh, to get it into a bid position now. Uh, so that's $185,000 that we budget enrolled. Uh, well Rehabilitation Project for a second, uh, well, $40,000, and we're going to Make sure that that gets done right around June 1st. So that's why it's going to be a rollover. Uh, zoning law rewrite, we had $26,500 unused that was anticipated to be used this year that shouldn't be used. 
uh, based on what we're seeing and the numbers still rolling, it would make the most sense. Why would we put that back in again, the same 0.65? I just want to, don't we have to put it in if it's an operational? Like, if it, I understand You're the capital expenses. You're not required to do anything, really. Uh, it's, I, I thought uh, the controller or whoever um, tells I, us we have to start from, you know, zero, you know, for operational reasons. Well, yeah, it, it's, if you intend to roll over, you go down into fund balance, up back into the line. That that's the mechanic of it ultimately. So you assume when you don't use it, the twenty six thousand five hundred, it goes into general funds fund balance, right? And then you're basically saying we're going to put it back into the same line again, that twenty six thousand five hundred as a starting number for next year, and that's coming out of fund balance. But that's yeah, that's yeah, where yeah, it really operationally works. Yeah, I guess. No, I, I mean I understand what you're saying. I just didn't think we should be using necessarily fund balance for operational expenses well if it's if it's a specific project or a task yeah, if it's a one time identifiable yeah brownfield yeah. opportunity area grant matching uh with seventeen thousand dollars we're working on that obviously right now uh pool resurfacing work you didn't use the ten thousand and i uh, bumped that actually up to twenty five thousand for this year because of some need on that uh building plans for a new dbw building fifteen thousand rolled over because we're in the middle of that basically right now and uh, not much has been built uh, sidewalk reimbursements and other spending. I only did thirty thousand. We might only we may have forty thousand actually roll over realistically. But to in total, sidewalks are at one hundred thousand dollars, which is the highest ever. Uh, the apron project at Union Fire Company forty three thousand nine forty two would roll. Saratoga Arts uh, grants that might get paid like right now ten thousand dollars more in that in a minute. Uh, replacement project uh, for the birdhouse project, there's 9,640 not used for birdhouses. And that becomes a factor of the time of the calendar because June 1st is the cutoff. And so we're rolling that over back, but we're going to push that on my tentative budget into uh, celebrations because it seemed to confuse things immensely to have arts with the Committee on the Arts and then these sublines of birdhouse. So pushing it into a better category this time. Russian weeds funding for dead, dying tree removal, $10,000 remaining, again, rolled over. That all totals $522,082 in fund balance that will be falling into fund balance, but coming back out to start the budget lines next year in the budget. That's, that's where that all comes from. That may be why, maybe why certain categories look higher than last time. They realistically aren't if you look at the overall uh, factors going into it. So there's that. Um, I had proposed a motion uh, to potentially amend the motion that was being considered here. Before I actually make the motion, I'll read it and then we'll, we'll figure out what to do with it, okay? The amendment that I proposed was to hold budget workshops on April 3rd, 2024, and if necessary, April 4th, 2024, from 7 p.m. until, uh, let's say, 8.30 p.m. out of respect to then in the village offices. Uh, workshops will be held based on requests from a majority of the board as the department heads they would like to interview. Such requests will be provided to the mayor by Friday, March 29th, 2024 at noon so that he can schedule the attendance of the request of department heads that a majority of board members wish to interview. So um, that's great. I, I think we'll need more time. I think our, our in past years, it's been like uh, two and a half workshops over three days, I mean, two and a half hours, seven to nine thirty over three days. Not that we're doing as many um, departments, but I'd say at least at least two hours over two days for one, yeah. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Would it make more eight. sense to do three days and try to keep it to an hour or an hour and a half? I, look, you know, he's going to. Gavi at eight thirty. If we're rolling uh, on the department, if we get something started and we're in the middle of it, we don't want to call them back the next day. So there will be. This is not a hard and fast number. This is just something to guide us. I think more than anything else, because again, let's be respectful to the fact that these are staff members that come in sometimes early the next morning at seven a.m. as well. So holding them out till nine o'clock might not be in the best interest of anybody in this situation too. So I think it's on us to try to get these things done by eight thirty. Um, Can we agree? On my tentative list, the DPW, Village Hall, Library, Fire, Police, I, Park and Tree, Community on the Arts, Committee on the Arts, and Celebrations slash Events. I, as I said, I'd like to look a little more deeply at what Frank will send us before I commit to any specific. What groups. he sending us? 
you sending us the breakdown of the budget oh. with the like each uh, one hundreds the whatever yeah. you expect. Yeah, in in the past when we've tried to do something at a meeting and you've said we'll like to do it between me and then we don't hear anything. Well, so. I, I, in, in, with respect, yeah, I, I suggest that last time, I think you guys heard something different than what was actually stated last time. I don't know why and why we were fighting this, but at the same time, right. it's like, well, hi, I'm, I'm really offering the same motion right. that I was suggesting so, without a motion last time. Right, no, I, I hear you. I'm, I'm glad we're talking about this. I guess what I'm saying is a week, oh, maybe over a week ago, you asked for board input on what departments. I think we have all, in, all the information we need to know because we see the budget and we see line items for what's happening this year and what's being requested next year. And we know what the important departments are. It's not like we don't know fire exists. Um, so uh, I'm hopeful there won't be a big delay in um, in the whole, so I've given my two cents. So I'd like to, I'm asking that there's not a big delay in everyone else say, even without, even if there's a delay in your in your reporting, to just put it on the books and let us know what's happening because that's fair to the department heads as well. So, so okay because it says Friday, say Frank misses the line, right? Say, say Frank for some reason doesn't get us the information. Regardless, everybody should put their information with their requested groups by Friday, but it, it does it does set a deadline for us to communicate that. So yeah, so say, say Frank doesn't get it together, but he's, he's pretty good to get it together <laughs> at some point. Uh, that's a great starting list, but I, I wanted to look a little more deeply at what he provides and, you know, so I can look more closely at some of those things. I guess what I'd like to say is even if um, uh, Bernadette and Mary um, don't want to talk about something, say celebrations, events, somehow we should be able to talk about those things. We should, I mean, it's an important part of the budget or committee on there. You're welcome parking. to talk about anything you want. I'm just not going to drag somebody uh, out to defend it if there's not a consensus majority to drag right. somebody so in. Uh, you're right. So I'm hopeful that this board yeah. will be interested okay. in actually talking about a good chunk of this I got, I got, I do have a breakdown of celebrations. So I just have to add Memorial Day uh, to that, actually. Where's so. BSBPA? Is that under what? Marketing. Yeah, but that 4,000 of that is signed so that Jennifer requests each year. So. Uh, so I, I, I'm going to uh, ask to amend my own motion here uh, that I may technically uh, to hold budget workshops on April 3rd, 2024, and if necessary, April 4th, 2024, from 7 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. in the village offices. Workshops will be held based on requests from a majority of the board as the department heads they would like to interview. Such requests will be provided to the mayor by Friday, March 29th at noon, so that he can schedule the attendance of the requested department heads that a majority of board members wish to interview. Um, I, I, I'm accepting my own amendment at this point. Um, okay. I, Do you accept? Also accept. Okay, because of the original and, making and second was one, two. And just to, for clarifying for department heads, part of it, I, I don't know if I can, when they're at these budget workshops, in my experience, haven't. They're, the departments are at the workshops and we're definitely talking with them, but it's also a conversation among the board. It's not just like us interviewing, like as you describe it, interviewing the department. Well, I, like we're having a conversation about the numbers in general. Yeah, and it's also a conversation in front of the public. That's why I think, you know, to have departments as, as many as yeah. we can do is important. But I just thought it sounds like we're putting them on the spot. It's not all about them. It's also a conversation among ourselves and coming to consensus or trying to. All in favor of the amended motion. Aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. We have literally seven minutes left in this meeting uh, before we would have to hit uh, public comment. So let's go to liaison reports, Sean. Uh, okay, DPW, um, guess what? They did some plowing and salting. Shocking again. <laughs> um, and oh, by the way, great job. Yeah. Uh, those guys were really diligent. They, I know in front of my house, I saw them come by about every hour on Saturday. So uh, it was pretty impressive. Um, Lowell Street roof repair, um, Kelly Square, uh, sand sewer cleaning, overflow pipe cleaned and repaired at the Rowland Street Preserve. Sign inventory, all signs. They're going to be reviewed. San Susi building has been blocked, framed, skinned, and roofed, but there's a little more to do. Uh, started painting and refurbishing um, new, new police department yep. station. Yep. 
And you said that with a question. <laughs> <laughs> we got one. Yep. <laughs> and some water meter reads and replacements on the to do list is some snow cleanup and removal. Uh, continue work on the San Susi building. Uh, we're doing some water training for four people. Uh, clean and repair the DPW building. Um, repair via contractor. That starts April 1st. It's a spring. It's San Susi spring. Oh, yeah. is it? Yep. Yeah. And then uh, police station, Thompson Street, continue. Uh, new stop sign installation at Hyde Boulevard. Repair catch basin on Scott Street. Three trees to be cut down and removed. And uh, tree stump grinds. And more water need, meter reads and replace. And an EPA water service report um, continuing on as well. Yep. So that is what the EPSW has been doing. Mary Library and anything else you got? Okay. Um, just library covered the events, which I missed, unfortunately, but I heard it was a success. Um, the, all of the officers of the Library Board of Trustees are going to stay on for another year. And there's going to be some exciting news with a grant that they received from Mary Beth Walsh, and they're going to have a big check, big check day. So that's coming up to us. Congratulations to them. Burn it out. Uh, I'll go as quick as I can. Uh, fire department. I just want to give an update from last year in uh, 2023. They were uh, our fire department responded to 480 emergency calls. Um, for assistance, uh, and they also dedicated in excess of 6,000 person hours in emergency response. Uh, that's a considerable amount of time, and we're very thankful for all they do for us. Uh, in January and February of this year, uh, there has been uh, 71 emergency calls, uh, and it goes through all exactly what uh, what the types of what included fire structures or structure fires, um, mutual aid, uh, motor vehicle accidents and other types of calls. Uh, and so far, uh, 340, 54 person hours were uh, uh, provided uh, by our volunteers in this uh, period. Um, in 2023, they did 78 company level drills, 19 uh, department level drills, and uh, with a total of uh, 2,771 person hours of training conducted. So we're just very thankful for all their time and effort uh, on behalf of our community. Uh, BSBPA, the farmer's market is eventually going to come. I know it doesn't seem like that with the snow. Uh, right now, they're accepting vendors. Um, for If you guys know anybody that uh, might have a small farm um, or a big farm, uh, please reach out to farmersmarket at boston.org. Uh, planning is underway for uh, the Belmont weekend and uh, trying to attract people to Boston Spa. Uh, and movies, uh, they have already selected for those that had, didn't go to the annual meeting, which was great, by the way. Um, they're going to be doing Secretariat uh, in June. July, they're going to do Barbie, so please dress up. Um, and then August, uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. You're going to wear pink. I'm gonna, you're, we're going to wear I pink. I will wear pink generally, you know. That's uh, it's not special. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do wear pink. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> um, just... Uh, excited to announce uh, the village every year well since last year we try to um, fiscally sponsor some applications for Saratoga arts grants um, we uh, five of those I think we only did five I can't even think of it right now uh, received awards from Saratoga arts uh, there'll be 2005 all these awards are 2500 for um, the development of a arts map for our community. Uh, sounds of summer and winter for those that got to go last year. Um, they were wonderful. I, I unfortunately I heard they were wonderful. Unfortunately, each time I kind of got blocked out. Uh, and then uh, make and there's going to be a make and take art uh, class as well as a Sunday everyday sketching, not Sunday everyday sketching class. Um, and then the BSBPA also received a grant for concerts in the park. So we're very thankful for everyone's efforts to apply and also Saratoga Arts for, you know, looking at our community and what we're trying to do to make opportunities for people to enjoy the arts. Ben was at the BSBPA uh, event too, I would think. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's yeah, great. That's great. Good to see everyone. Um, Go for it. So continuing with Committee on the Arts, um, they are doing something 
kind of cool and interesting and uh, unique for this uh, village. Um, they're going to celebrate uh, April as uh, National Poetry Month. And so they're doing a series of events and they're also asking businesses to participate by posting poetry in their venues. So if you know a business, then um, that would be great, the more the merrier. Um, the events are April 13th, Balsaspa Public Library, 12 to three. They're doing a poetry writing workshop. April 17th, they're doing open mic night at the Real McCoy, um, starting at their doors open at 6.30. All these things are free. And April 27th, Saturday, there's a poetry performance reading at the museum. Um, so those are all free. And you can find this stuff on the face, their Facebook page. And then for the uh, park and tree, just a reminder that um, Saturday, April 27th, they're gonna do an Arbor Day tree planting 10 a.m. in Kelly Park. And um, they are also starting to plan a uh, flower planting in Wiswall, like a weekend to get Wiswall sort of up to shape. But, but they haven't um, come up with a date of that yet. It's nine o'clock. Uh, by rules, we go up to a half hour for public comment. Uh, additional here, obviously, uh, it will also get a uh, quick attempt to uh, give board response and that would close the meeting. So if you do have a final public comment to make, raise your hand on Zoom. It's a good time to raise your hand right now for this so that we have you in queue. If God forbid we were run over that half hour. So if you do have a public comment on Zoom, now's the time. I think Liz was uh, first. Uh, Liz Cormos, 89 Hyde. I actually live on Hyde and walk my dog down Hyde multiple times. Mitzi. Yes, with <laughs> Mitzi. Uh, one thing is, if you might remember, I presented data that I analyzed from the police department. Um, there were 198 stop sign uh, incidences. Actually, only 38 of those were violations. The 160 of them are warnings. They gave warnings because people roll through stop signs. And um, the most of them were at Malta and Hyde, where there is a stop sign. So, um, you know, I don't know if this is the data they're going to collect or if they're going to put a, a, an officer, you know, all day long uh, in front of the top stuff. You know, I think uh, Sean's comments about what kind of metrics. Um, I would like to see <clears throat> us take advantage of CBRTC's free offer of doing traffic studies on that street. I mean, it doesn't cost us anything. They can do, Hi, this. yeah, well, you said they did. Um, they, it, you know, we'll get some baseline data, scientific data, because I don't think we really want to put an officer there, you know, 24 seven for a week um, in order to see how many people, and if they have their police car, then everybody's going to stop <laughs> <laughs> because there's a policeman sitting there. Whereas one of those road measurements things are, you know, they're not going to know that they're being measured necessarily. Um, the other thing on the fire department, I would like to see data as on their calls. It's very impressive. How many are in the village? Because they're, they serve a bigger area. And I'd like to see what the breakdown is. Is the growth happening here? Or is it in the outer areas because there's more population outside? I think that would be interesting to see. It's growing in other areas just to help you out because of the uh, new higher uh, density buildings, et cetera. It yeah. just goes with flow on that. Well, just on the whole thing about us paying for fire, what part <coughs> is our piece of it? So I'd like to see that, to see that information. And also, uh, you mentioned the garage study. There's a bill, you know, for part of that. When is that going to be done? Well, first we got to find out if it's going to cost us three million, six million, or what. Yeah. And so there's a lot of uh, things they have to look at to make sure in a small space it can fit in the garage, and that's what well, we're working on. Well, I mean, if there's initial concept plan before the budget, I think we'd like to, no, to see. There's not a sufficient plan to judge off of. Yeah, there's not. And so they're Did they on. deliver us something? It, it was a very rough sketch. Generally, showed Jeff to see if they were on the right track for what he was looking for. He had no, no bearing. It's a reality, let's call it. Right. Yeah. Well, that, that's been hanging out there a long time and I'd like to see some action on that as well. Thank you. 
My, my inside voice is digging on that one. Uh, Meryl? Sorry. Marilyn Stevenson, 45 West High Street. I want to thank uh, Jennifer for posting the 14th annual geranium and plant sale to the village website. The deadline for the Balsam Spy House and Garden Club uh, order deadline is Thursday, May 9th. And, uh, as I said before, the proceeds go to our public gardens in the village. Uh, May is Preservation Month. And in light of that, um, the Historic District Commission is sponsoring an informative workshop, Researching Your Historic Home. It will be held at the Balsam Spa Library Community Room. It's an opportunity for those folks who have an older home to um, use some online resources. And this is a hands-on workshop. Uh, accessing historical and public resources will tell you how to date your house. Um, it is May 9th, 7 p.m., free admission. Everyone is welcome. And uh, Jennifer also has that. That will go on the website. Uh, finally, I want to just mention it was very helpful to have the draft master plan for Wiswall Park, which you know showed up on last month's agenda. Um, and I will condense because it's late, I'll condense my comments. But I did meet with two garden clubs in the area, the Balsam Spa House and Garden Club and the Timely Herb Group. And in general, just to summarize, um, I got a lot of positive feedback about the draft master plan. Um, everything from about time to positive suggestions about using native plants in Wiswell Park. I don't know if that's going to be possible. And then a very specific comment um, about uh, you know, the need to leave the pathway as planned, um, the one that goes from Front Street Deli <clears throat> through the park. Uh, there's some concern that if that is eliminated, then people will just cut through the park and create you know, a, a, a dirt path. When I met with Timely Herb Group, um, I don't know how many of you know Mary Lyle, but she reminded me that in 1986, the Timely Herb Group was instrumental in adopting Wiswall Park as an adopt a plot. And apparently that was a thing back then. The group actually did quite a bit of work in Wiswall. I had only been in the village about two years or one year by that time, so I was not aware of it. But apparently Wiswell Park in 1986 was the New York State uh, winner of an adopt a, a plot contest that had been sponsored by a nationwide magazine. I say wow. that because um, Mary like was able to find the Burt Grandin letter recognizing um, the efforts, um, just so you have that for the minutes. Um, final comment would just be budget workshops were very helpful during the more than two years ago when the Comprehensive Plan Steering Committee actually got a chance to preview that and work on their project after that. Thank you. Marilyn, just could you, if you haven't already, can you please um, send your those comments you got to Caitlin at the Park and Tree? Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the house? Yes. And showing again, 39 Hyde Boulevard. I just wanted to say thank you for the trustees that voted yes on the stop signs. To those that voted no, I don't disagree with the things that you said. I would welcome any point in time to come hang out at my house. It's not just when the kids are crossing for school. The street is beautiful. There's people walking, there's people jogging, there's people running. The bike plan that we did, I thought was fantastic. I don't know why it sort of stopped in motion a little bit. I don't know if stop signs are the answer. I just know that something really needs to be done. And I'm really happy that we'll have them up for the summer months. So at least it does lull you into a false sense of security, but at least I have 
there's something that the police officers can stop. Whenever we've talked to the officers, they said, well, the person's only doing 35. And I say, well, if you only hit my kid at 35, like what's going to happen? It's a, you don't stop at a stop sign. It's a clean, I think it's a cleaner ticket for the officers and maybe they can argue it a little bit differently. I'm saddened to see that Sean has so much DOT experience. We've been talking about this since before you came on board. I, I, we truly love the trustees to get together and work together to make this village the great place that it is. Um, and follow up question schools out next week, or will we be opening up Kelly Park? Uh, if the weather will cooperate, uh, the answer is uh, most likely yes. Uh, but uh, let's see what the next couple of days bring and we'll begin to uh, kind of foray into that uh, department. Right, we also want to get the fencing up for uh, the ball and basketball uh, sooner rather than later. So that's one thing we want to maybe get them before we like, open it for okay. the masses. All right, just a question. Yep. Thank you. No problem. Hey, Bales in the house. It's great. Yeah, truck I'm trying to use. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor said more walking if I can do it. That's a good point. If I could, could I have just a couple minutes before my time so that I can report on the uh, event yesterday? Go the, for it. Uh, or for the not for committee, the task force. And we will not count this against the half hour of uh, half hour. comment, but you you please, please be prompt. How's that? Uh, first um, I just want to say thank you to, uh, first of all, the committee. Uh, the committee did, I'm sorry, the task force did a wonderful job along with the Lions Club, uh, along with any other groups? Well, the donations from the Legion. The donations from the Legion, which uh, Frank mentioned. Um, Some Rotarians were also involved. Yeah, there were a few Rotarians yeah. there. Um, and a lot of family members that were there to help. Uh, must say the Easter Bunny was awesome, as was the Giant Egg, uh, who was sort of a family member. Um, but I want to thank more the people because the people that came when we opened that door, uh, I got sacrificed and I had to be put out in the lobby to hold people back from getting there, getting in. And finally, when I moved and was able to open one door, it was like, you know, the great flood. Uh, I would estimate well over 300, 350 people. Uh, I did not hear one negative, uh, comment at all, which sort of holds true with all the events that we've put on in this village over the last year or two. Um, you don't hear negatives. Kids were thrilled. They, uh, because of the uh, donations, we were able to add some eggs in the afternoon, but everybody got 12 eggs. Everybody was happy with that. Uh, there was 15 or 20 of us that got together on Monday night and stuffed 4,000 eggs with candy. Uh, that's a lot of eggs, that's a lot of candy. Uh, and everything, just about everything was given away, except for what Frank did take up to the uh, play. Um, crafts, they were coming out of there with some of the, the most adorable little crafts, you know, with chickens and bunnies and everything else. It was just great. And they loved it. They had such a good time. So these kind of events are really, really important to this village. Not just you know, uh, the big events, but the smaller events like that. The, uh, it's important. We need to keep that going. Okay, enough said. Okay. okay. That'll be your real comments. No. <laughs> yes. Um, I've heard uh, a number of comments that we need to get data. We need to study things uh, for these stops, you know, not stop signs, we gotta, we gotta have a study first, or we, how are we going to get the metrics? How are we going to be sure that this is the truth? Well, I think this all sort of started with us taking input from the residents, did it not? I mean, the residents were saying they wanted to have traffic slowed down. They wanted to have safer crossing of the streets. And we took that as what we what we got to do. But when it comes the other way and we try things, oh no, now we got to do a study to make sure it worked. Why can't we take the input from the residents that are there? You know, ask her, 
you know, is, do you feel it's working, you know, by your house? Do the other residents think it's something that's working? You know, that could be done, you know? And, and again, the police report that Liz brought up, I'll go to that. See how many uh, different, what the difference is there. It's good data. Mm -hmm. um, I also heard, heard Sean say something about feelings. We need to not go with our feelings. You said that that isn't the important information. 100% agree, 100% agree that we need good information. How we gather that, we may differ on our, our ways of doing that. Um, but would you agree, Sean, that if somebody is just expressing a feeling, it's really not as important as real data? Would you agree with that? I don't think you'd use it as a metric in comparison whether something is safer or not. Okay, or in general, if somebody is feeling something. And my point is that I also heard, well, I'm feeling that I'm being politically targeted. So what's the, what's the data that you're using for that then? I haven't seen any data. I've seen feelings and I've seen emotions, but I haven't seen any data. Bring me some data. Um, the last thing I'll say is growth in Milton and Boston was also brought up. There's a lot of growth, a lot of apartments going up, a lot of multiple family housing, a lot of multi-unit housing, and we can't provide for them in the village anymore. It's too bad we didn't have a Walmart or something in the area where people could go buy sporting goods and stuff. Yeah, just saying. <laughs> And this is when I like Keith Lewis talk after that. <laughs> go for it. I quit. Go for it, Keith. Keith, go. <laughs> it's yours. Go ahead, Keith. There you go. Keith Lewis, 38 East High Street, Bob. I want to again remind the board uh, that the 75000 dollar penalty that Frank used to sway the board into selling Woods Hollow is arbitrary. It's not included in the contract. Um, that may be the, the projected amount the vendor would have made from the entire job, but it's being proposed as a payment for the vendor only marking trees. The final executed contract that was compromised when the date was reduced by 18 months without the board approval technically makes that contract invalid as it was signed without authorization. This figure of $75,000 is arbitrary. It's not contractual. And as you finalize Woods Hollow, as you mentioned tonight, it's imperative that you take those facts into consideration before you throw away village money that should be paid for the property in part because no municipality may pay more for land purchase than the assessed value. So when Milton did their deal memo and put down the gross payment amount, that's the entire purchase price. And that is the amount the village should collect. Buyout negotiations on an invalid contract should be done separately. Now, the most important part of the trustee's job is your fiscal responsibility to the village and our financial health. And I believe the tentative budget becomes the final budget if no final can be agreed upon between passage of the tentative and the final deadline, which is why the workshop should occur early enough to have substantive discussions as a board before the tentative passage takes place. Democracy dies behind closed doors by allowing the heavy lifting department and budget requester discussions to take place exclusively by the mayor. You reduce the contributions other trustees can make. You create a disproportionate power dynamic where the mayor not only filters the majority of the logic and the facts, and as Ray said, the feelings through his lens alone, but you also reduce the other trustees' ability to make real contributions that can impact a final budget, the largest part of their job. In addition, you add more stress to an already stressful process by not utilizing all the brain power of the entire board but instead create a lopsided dynamic where the mayor rules the process and the outcome by putting a handicap upon the other trustees. Thank you.
in the corrections uh, column, it's not assessed value, it's appraised value that a municipality cannot uh, purchase over or pay over, uh, just to be clear on that. Uh, Jason Townley. Hey, uh, Jason Townley, 31 Hyde Boulevard. Uh, just a quick follow-up. Um, I don't know, you may have said uh, earlier, but uh, are the, the in-street crosswalk signs, are they going back? Uh, in the crosswalk areas, um, I know some of them were damaged, and I know uh, some of them are missing. Um, I didn't know if they were going back. Uh, and as far as the flashing lights, uh, when a pedestrian presses flashing lights, I definitely want to second uh, the opinion that I think that would be a little intrusive uh, in homes having flashing lights. Um, it's, it's not a city over here, so to speak. Uh, we have some street lights and stuff, which is fine, but I think those flashing lights would be a little bit of a nuisance. Um, and then the last thing, the, the intersection currently at, uh, Hyde Boulevard and Chapman, uh, the ADA sections of those, uh, crosswalks are currently covered in snow. Is that a resident issue or is that a village issue? Because... I'd be more than happy to go up there tomorrow and clean that area out so that we don't have to crawl, you know, climb up the snow banks to get through uh, those intersections today. As I was going by my six year old was climbing the snow bank uh, as I was trying to help her up as a, as a car went through that intersection and kind of buzzed past us. So it's a little bit of a, a hazard as it is. Uh, two things then Jason, uh, yep. one uh, in reverse order, uh, Basically today I was uh, discussed with DPW trying to pop out uh, areas and uh, intersections and uh, crosswalks and whatnot, especially in Milton Avenue uh, today because uh, it was almost impossible to traverse it for bus stop purposes, et cetera. And they've begun doing that process. Uh, it's just, there was an enormity on this one. I, I yeah. understand where all the snow came from in the last week of March, just about, uh, but they're working their way through to correct any deficiencies like those. Okay. Uh, so I will try to pay attention to that uh, tomorrow for you uh, on Hyde. You're saying it's happening and thereabouts. Yeah, it's impossible. You have to kind of climb over the chat, the Hyde side uh, as you're ending Chapman uh, to get over to the other side of Hyde Boulevard, which okay. is where we're on that other side, opposite side anyway. Jennifer is uh, intently listening to this and will uh, deliver that message uh, to DBW if I don't get to him first in the morning. Uh, number two, uh, if we have those signs, yes, I, I'm also trying to figure out if we can find st actual stop signs to go in the middle as well to help show folks the new, uh, you know, prohibition that's uh, at that uh, side of the intersection. On, uh, yeah, I, I know we had, um, I know they were purchased kind of secondhand and yeah. some of them were yield and some of them were stop and it was a little bit confusing, you know, it doesn't say yield, hey, they're halfway in the cross, you know, crossing the road. Can they still go through the intersection? The answer is no, you can't. So uh, I know some motors were definitely confused in that fashion. Yep, and so we'll we'll take a good look at our inventory of that stuff as well and uh, improve on that. You know, step one is getting the normal stop signs up. Step two is to see what we can purchase that will, as they said, not walk away on us uh, if we put it in the middle of the street. Uh, but uh, you know, at the same time, uh, be safe there and not necessarily get hit by an eighteen wheeler that shouldn't be on the street in the first place. Just saying. Thank you. Anybody else in the house? See none. Can I get a motion? Uh, oh, no, I cannot get a motion yet because uh, board response, if there's any. Just a quick. Um, Ray, if you have interest in planting flowers on village property, can you please contact Caitlin and work with the Park and Tree Board, and they'd be happy to work with you on that in the Rotary Club. Thank you. Anybody else? Did we kind of went in real time there, uh, yeah. respectfully. So. It, just sorry, the um, I'm excited about the uh, the pickleball courts and basketball courts in in Kelly Park. I haven't had a lot of detail. Is there any funds required of the village? We had some uh, put aside. We also have fifteen thousand given by the county for it. And we have some that we've allocated yeah. this year. Mm -hmm. And this will be done in time for this budget year. So does that be rolling? Right. You know how much that is. I don't know the exact number, but uh, it's, I think I we, we had last year's pricing of fencing, so we got to get just renewed pricing at this point. Fencing. Yeah. Okay. 
And okay, uh, can I get a motion to the vouchers be audited and the meeting adjourned at 9.23 p.m.? Trustee Funday, Trustee Raymond, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. See you in April, everyone.